Hello guys, uh, Mike is here through Discord. I hope you can hear him, you should be able to. I have the volume up to the max. What's up guys? So, today, can we, this will be, um, there's Corey again. I'm sorry! Corey might jump in and out during this for random things. Well yeah, you're in our bedroom. Um, I I think it's. I think it's. Is it in here? Probably. Um. So, uh, today, this is Mike's first rendition in the Campy Cast. Yeah, this is the very first time I've been. Yes. And, uh, today. The Campy Cast. For... So I hope I don't screw it up. Uh, no, I'm it's. I'm feeling very good about it. It's like jazz, it's freeform. You can't mess up. You just do whatever. I hate you. <laughs> Do you like jazz? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> okay. Oh, I found my chapstick. Sorry. Okay. I have one brain cell and it doesn't work. <laughs> um, today, for a jumping off topic, I'm sure we'll talk Sorry. about lots of other topics during this at some, a certain extents. Um, we're gonna start with our thoughts on what how what we predict this next gen of video games talking about the ps5 the series x switch pro and apparently what's coming out soon the new atari console um of course we don't we just have this the best of our knowledge some little some a lot it's pretty much just going to be loose predictions on what we already know and what we guesstimate so don't take it for facts take it as an opinion and use it however you wish. And of course, we'll probably talk about lots of other stuff as well, depending on how the conversation between me and Mike goes and Corey when she comes in, if she chimes in. So um, let's start with um, let's start with something simple with this. Um, so Mike, what do you think this gen's gonna be like, like going forward? What do you think of like how? What do you expect from this gen, like quality-wise? Good, bad, better than the previous, worse? Like give like your overall impression so far from what you know. I really don't know, so I'm gonna have to say it, it will probably be bad. It will probably be on the lower side. It's gonna be trash, bro. I'm sorry. Like if if that makes some people upset, like I'm sorry. But I I, I just think the new stuff is gonna be trash. I agree, actually. And the biggest reason why is well, first off, the newer consoles usually are the least polished. Usually, the second versions of them are usually I would at least the second one, third one sometimes. They sometimes have a third one, but usually the second edition is usually the refined version. You know, if they make them, they don't always do that. Like in the 6th gen when they did PS2, Xbox, GameCube. They didn't do that with Xbox, GameCube. They kind of cocked out of that. Um, they did with PS2. Um, but yeah, um, and of course we've seen it with the, the 7th gen. I think it's 7th gen with PS3, 360. They did like three of them. Same thing with PS4 and Xbox One. Um, God, I hate that name. Console's fine, but I hate that name. <laughs> but, um... But yeah, so I expect when they do release those, they'll probably be better performance because because so far, um, from based on what I know, the PS5 takes more chances, but some of it isn't quite polished. Xbox Series X plays it safe, but but it ends up coming more like a port over from the Xbox One. So there's different opinions on that overall. Um, Mike, I assume you're probably when you ever get a chance, you'll probably get a Series X. Um, what do you hope? I have a Series X. You do? I didn't know that. That's awesome. Um, what do you think of it? Well, I have a Series X. I don't even know what it's called, bro. That's how bad it is. Well, it's it's good, but it could be better. Yeah, cause I a a, a lot of times it gets confused with the Xbox One X. Um, because yeah, the names I... are so similar to each other. Like, the Series X is the Black Tower. Yeah. I... I had something <laughs> I literally couldn't tell you. The new console, man. Is it... Is it like, um... Can it stand like a tower? Is it... Is it like the... PC, yeah, I think, is just the way to go, man. Yeah, does it look like a PC tower? 
No, it's more horizontal. It's probably one of these earlier ones. It's the one X. That's the that's the PS. I still have the one X. Yeah, that's the newest version of the Xbox One. The most, uh, the prime Xbox One. Because there was the original Xbox One, then the Xbox, Xbox ser Series, Xbox One Series S, which you gave me, the white one. And then the one you have, I assume, is probably the Xbox One X, which is the most powerful and most updated rendition of the Xbox One lineup. It, um,. Yeah, cause, so yeah, um, but yeah, uh, so, so yeah, that's what you, I think that's what you got, um, so yours should, from what I know, um, the Series X has some features, but the layout and the menu system is pretty much the same, um, design-wise, um, how do you have you seen what the PS5 looks like compared to the Series X, like the PC tower? I mean, no, I haven't. I'm gonna. Play. I mean, feel free to look at the picture. I guess. Yeah, feel free to look them up. I mean, look them up because that's perfectly it's, fine. It's much more like a PC tower. It's yeah. A lot different in design. Look. I will say, I will give credit for them trying to do something different with consoles in the past, because in the past they kind of started to play it safe. I mean, they were functional and they worked well, but they were definitely more, like, conservative. I, I do like that they're trying to take chances to stand out. In terms of, like, really placed, Sony really kind of went weird, because Sony, because they're a large target of their audience is, like, in Asia... And, and in Asia, a lot of, like, housings and apartments are super cramped, tiny, so space efficientness is a must. So a lot of their consoles that they made were very space efficient, space efficient. so it's surprising to see them make the PS5 such a fucking towering inferno of fuckery. <laughs> it doesn't look terrible, in my opinion, but it's definitely something very different than what they usually do. Xbox actually went the other way. They went like I just think it's a huge shift for them. Yeah, and I think it's I, and I will say this, I, they they took more chances with their console than Xbox so Microsoft did with Xbox. I think a more a large portion of their Xbox's focus was getting like uh, video game companies to produce exclusives for them. Like they bought Bushida. They bought a uh, It really popped a thousand dollars for the Xbox Series X. Oh, oh, you gotta be careful. They'll scalp them because when the when these things drop, they kept getting sold out. Especially PS5. PS5 is like constantly sold out, like crazy. It's su It's very. How much? Did... Well, in the PS5 cost because if it's cheaper, I would definitely get that. They're both the same price. They're both like three ninety nine. It's just. It's just when you try to buy them online, the prices vary because of diff because delivery, like getting things repaired, those extra costs. Plus, some people try to rip people off online. Um, plus, some people take advantage of the demand for them, so they kind of jack it up a little bit to take advantage of the demand for the console itself. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, the only th the real thing. Yeah, some of it. Is yeah came with like a controller set yeah if the if special editions could cost more like if they if it's like a special spider-man edition or uh or whatever or halo edition it'll cost more but the standard yeah. for both is 399 yeah. um, i was looking at the wrong thing man oh uh, you're good it can get confusing with all that stuff um but yeah the only th but yeah, Microsoft spent a lot of time buying the rights to exclu like game companies to produce exclusives for them, so they can. Because the big complaint about their like, you know, past gen Xbox One was there wasn't enough like games itself, let alone exclusives. There was like very little compared to play PS4. PS4 had like tons compared to Xbox, and that was a major criticism. So Microsoft is stepping up their game in that area. 
and I feel like they spent time focusing on that and kind of played a little safe on their console, knowing that they can always redesign stuff if they have a chance, which I actually think it's a smart way of doing it, because, because if you, because it really addresses, like, a major problem, and while this gen might, like, at first might seem a little safe, they can always put in extra stuff as they go. And there is a couple extra things, I just don't remember what they are. Um, PS5, though, they did a lot of stuff in PS5. Um, but there are some hiccups, specifically with the controller, because they tried doing something unique with the controller, which I don't think is related to the problem it has, but... Um, so the, the buttons and the triggers and everything are, like, game-sensitive or something like that, which means that... Like, if you're, like, a runner in a game, when you press the button, the trigger to run, if your player gets exhausted, the trigger becomes harder to press down because it has less turbo, less speed, for example. Okay. It's stuff like that. Just kind of, like, it's kind of like they're, they were mixing in standard controller stuff with, like, 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 making the buttons and controller react to what you're going through in the game. Um, there was an issue, and I don't think it's been fixed yet, of, like, controller drift, where the, where the sticks, like, where you, where the, it's not, uh, the responsiveness of the sticks or whatever is kind of off, or does, it's floaty or something. Um, that's a big issue, but it doesn't happen to all of them. It's kind of just something that just happens, and it's inconsistently happens, so it might happen for a bit, then it'll disappear and might come back, so it's kind of a, a weird thing they have to fix. I don't know if they fixed it yet. Um, they have a bit more exclusives coming out than Xbox does off the bat. Uh, um, and, uh, they have a lot more features on next gen. Like they tried to make it feel like a next gen like experience. Um, one big thing they did, they did like the console itself has like no, no like no load time at all. Like it's like it moves that quick. Yeah, you keep cutting out, bro. I keep coming I'm out. Sorry, the the mic for this just is keeps cutting out, and I can't hear the end of your sentences. Okay. Um. Can I call you on my phone? Um, let's see. Uh, you can you can call on your phone. Just if you have the Discord app you on your the phone. Discord app on my phone. Use you can use that. It'll still be the same. Yeah. Yeah. Do, yeah. Do that. I'll do that. Try and use the app on my phone. Okay. Um. So what did you miss when we and I was talking last about stuff? What did they do? All the councils, like what specifics they had? Yeah. Okay. I'll. I'll. This will be. A, this will be a bad. <laughs> so, basically, for the series. Ser yeah, man, it cut out, bro. I'm it just sorry. did. I think it just did, dude. Hmm. Why does it keep cutting out on my phone too? That's weird. My my yeah, laptop. I don't know, man. My laptop's on the best Dude. internet. <laughs> um. Uh, let me try maybe raising my laptop up a little bit. <laughs> oh. Alright, um, am I still cutting out? No, it sounds pretty good. Okay, um, I guess, um, I guess if you miss something, just ask me to repeat myself, and I'll do that. Um, okay. but yeah, the councils, um, I guess to kind of get a quick summary, the Series X, um, it, kept, it keeps it safe. It has a couple cool features in it, but I, I think a lot of the focus when they were making was buying companies up to make exclusives for the console so they could compete with Sony's exclusives. 
and I think they'll probably add a few extra stuff along the way as they go on with this gen. Um, in terms of Sony, they took more chances, but there's a couple hiccups they went through, through with um with theirs um like um like their controller has a drift issue but but also the controller but the controller has a cool um um it has a feature where where for example if your player like if your player's running and you use the trigger to run um, the controller, as if your player runs out of turbo, the trigger for the sprint will be harder to press. And stuff like that. Just features that makes the controller, like, sensitive to, like, the, like, stamina or whatever your player, your, the games, your player, you're, you're going through in the game. Um, and that, that works well. It's just the drift issue that's kind of concerning. I don't know if it's fixed or not. I, I don't know how much of an issue. I know it's not like... I know it can disappear and reappear. It's, so it's not like a permanent thing. But it does happen. And I don't know if it's fixed yet. But Sony has come out of the gate with more newer games than Xbox. But that's not saying much. It's The exclusives they released are more like... A, a few unknowns. Some familiar ones. But they also... Are releasing a lot of games that you could also play on PS4. Um, kind of like Xbox is doing with some of theirs. Um, Xbox is doing a lot more with backwards compatibility though for their consoles than Sony is. Sony didn't, only with PS4 stuff, and a lot of people took issue with that. Um, in fact, over over the last few months when Sony was going to shut down PS3, PSP, and PS Vita online servers, the online stores, there was a huge fit and attack on Sony for Sony not respecting their past and everything that came with it because of everything. And Sony had to backtrack on two of them. They're still shutting down PSP, which is fine, because, because so many people criticize them for not respecting the past. So, I'm expecting, overall, I'm expecting this gen to be close to, like, the PS3 360 gen. I still think Sony will probably edge Xbox out, just mainly because of their reach across the world compared to Microsoft. Microsoft still struggles in, like, areas like in Asia or whatever, but who knows? Things can change. Um, so we'll have to see on that. Um... But yeah, um, that I. Huh? Also, I mean, and some of the games are ridiculous for the ones that are sixty dollars. Oh yeah, prices. Ooh, they're. I hate the price. The games are gonna be expensive. Like, it, it, it's bar not. It's gonna the like everything's gonna be expensive, and of course. With thanks to DLC and monetization, thank you EA. Or they have to buy it after you already have the game. Yeah. And then you have to pay even more money. Yeah. Just it, for a whole little bit more. Yeah, it's they, it, they find it. Mhm. Mm <laughs> yeah, it's it's gonna be ridiculous. That's fair criticism. Like, I just think that's a fair criticism because how many games? Are well, the problem is that uh, yeah, the problem is that games cost so much to make that that if they were going to try to go without DLC, the games will probably cost half to double of the sale price because they cost that much to make. And and it's kind of it, and it kind of sucks that it goes down to that. Um but I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess it's at some point I can see it being a necessary evil because, and granted, not every game that does DLC or monetization is 
a bad company or make even bad games, but EA definitely is on the side of negativity with it, for sure. Especially because of the careful and stuff. That's just my opinion. I'm sorry, you're gonna have to repeat that, Mike. You kind of cut out a bit there. Yeah. I think EA Sports has done a terrible job with the Madden football. I think it's terrible. Uh, yeah, they they're it was. Hear that? Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, they they've done awful. Like. Like, their sports stuff, I think outside of maybe the NHL games, I would probably not play at all. Um, but even then, NHL, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, it's definitely hard. It's definitely not a good thing at all. Um, I do think that hopefully, um, as the generation goes on, I feel like we're going to see a rise in indie, indie people indie game makers because there was a ton of them i think i think that's what made the ps4 flourish really is because ps4 had so many indie games um they were P sony was really open on getting those i when i looked on the xbox on the game store microsoft store on my x on my xbox one i mean it was it was not nearly as plentiful as as the ps4 I mean, there's still good games on there, and the backwards compatibility is a cool feature for sure. But, and certainly better than Sony's, but it's still not as much. Especially if you already played those original Xbox or 360 games like a gajillion times, you're not really looking to play them again. I mean, for a newcomer, it's fantastic, but if you're an Xbox veteran, it's not going to be anything new for you. Um, what about Adobe? About what? <laughs> Eric Cartman had to get a Nintendo Wii, so he froze himself and then went forward in time 500 <laughs> and then Oh my god, I remember that. That was hilarious. Yeah, yeah, that, that reminds me of Nintendo. Nintendo is making a Switch Pro that's going to come out, I believe, this year. <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> to see if they could compete with the other two markets. Well, and Sony. well, so far their Switch has outsold all the consoles by a ton. That's not even close. Like, so... <laughs> so, um... So yeah, they're they're kind of in the league of their own right now, and the Switch Pro is supposed to perform like a gen you would expect for today's gen. So it's going to be an incredibly interesting thing to see. I mean, I'm probably not going to get it, because I already have a Switch, and Corey has a Switch Lite, so we're probably not going to get any Switches anytime soon. However, if we do get one of the two... It's hard to say. I mean, Corey favors Series X, and to be honest, I it's not I can't disagree with her on that because Sony hasn't really just because I have a gut feeling we're gonna see some good things this gen with Microsoft because they have more to prove because of how shitty they were the last gen. <laughs> so they're gonna it's gonna be a cycle, kind of like how in the P3, PS3 360 Sony almost got their ass clapped by Microsoft. <laughs> So they had to step up their game for PS4. So please never say ass clap again, please. Okay. <laughs> um it well it's it's true. They almost did. They almost lost it. If it wasn't for the freaking Last of Us release on the PS3 for a little bit, they probably would have lost. But but yeah, I I think that if they're, I think that if micro, I'm kind of betting on Microsoft stepping up their game. I, I don't think they'll win the gen, um, but I think it'll be close. I think Sony will probably end up winning because, even though Microsoft put more effort into getting 
game makers to make exclusives for it, like Bushida and Konami, um, there's it. I it's hard to say if they'll actually take advantage of it or if they're just gonna hold everything like a Scrooge and not do anything with it. So we'll have to see how that goes, and a lot of it does depend on. I mean, to be honest, at this point, council performance, I don't think it's going to be much of a difference. Because low times are either going to be... Low times are either going to be, like, non-existent or so quick that it's barely noticeable. And they're all... And the performance is going to be about the same. There's not going to be hardly any difference. The only difference is going to be the game library and, of course, layout of the of the, of the, you know the like the menu and everything itself but i don't i mean everyone has their own taste with that there's not much you can do about that it's really to me the big difference is going to be the games so exclusives are going to be very important i mean it doesn't help that they didn't release halo <laughs> they didn't release halo as their opening game for the system in fact i don't think they had any exclusives open up for the series x which is a problem <laughs> Because Sony did quite a few for theirs. Um, but again, Series X has performed relatively well because they kind of played it safe, but it's reliable. Hasn't really been any issues. It, the Series X does perform better than the newest Xbox One version of Xbox One. So you're getting the best right there. And it has a couple extra things I can't remember, but it has some cool stuff. Um, another feature of the PS5 that I forgot to mention earlier is the fact that you can quick access playthroughs and playthrough scenes if you get stuck in the game, like during the pause menu. So if you get stuck in there, you pause, you bring up something, and I'll play a video kind of showing like what to do. And I see Corey in the background of my video teasing everything I say. Um, but yeah, um, I, I do think, I do think overall, I think if Sony does make improvements, I think they could do very good if they keep up with their library and their games and they keep doing things. But I, I think what's going to hurt them is the fact that Bushida is going to be exclusive to Xbox because really what happened with Bushida is they're still licensed, contracted to make some games for Sony, but but at some point they will be truly exclusive to Xbox. Um, Konami games are straight to exclusive for Xbox, and there's a lot of great hitters in that one. Um, but yeah, there's as if if all Microsoft really has to do is just make exclusives really because the third party games are going to perform well on both there's not going to be a lot of difference the game changers are going to be the exclusives if they can out exclusive sony i think they could do it but it's gonna take they're they're gonna have to really hone it in on that i mean because everything else they're pretty much set i mean they could add a few extra little things there and there as they progress but that's going to be the main thing. Another big thing is PS4, since PS4 is being able to stream on YouTube straight from the console, if they could add that feature, that'd be huge. But that's, not everyone might use that, but it'd be nice to have that as opposed to, like, Mixer, which they can. <laughs> so. Yeah. So. Dogs, right? <laughs> it's back, bro. But yeah, um, so what games are you looking forward to coming up soon? Or is there any upcoming games you're excited about? I'm so excited to play Assassin's Creed. I haven't played it. Assassin's Creed? Bro. Yeah. Yeah. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Oh, I want to play it. Yeah. But it more than any Assassin's Creed game ever bought. It was cool at all, but it was just a little bit disappointing. Yeah, I don't have much experience. Yeah, I don't have much experience with Assassin's Creed. I just played 
the video is out of this. Um, I played my first time I played an Assassin's Creed game, and I did an episode on Black Flag for 360. That was fun. I like that a lot. Um, I I think for me, what games I'm excited about, I like seeing what the indie scene brings because there's a lot of indie games I have on my PS4 that I love. I like to see what they bring. Um, I think in terms of sports games, it's going to be hard to say because they brought show over to Xbox One, even though it shouldn't be on Xbox because, you know, whatever. But they brought that over, so now you got a baseball game there. It kind of sucks for Sony because they lost a big exclusive right there. But um, another thing is, um, what else did they... Um, yeah, sports games, I don't... I'd say if you if you want to get, like, really good sports games, you're going to have to focus on the indies. It does suck, though, that Super Mega Baseball, the people who make those were bought by EA. It makes me very nervous about what's going to happen to the franchise, because those games are freaking awesome. Probably the best indie baseball games out there. Probably the second best next to the show. Maybe arguably the best, depending on taste. Um... But yeah, the other sports, football is kind of... I mean, there's indie football out there that's pretty good, but not everyone's going to be into that. Um, basketball, not a lot, unfortunately. Basketball Classics is only on Steam, but it might get on consoles. That's why it might happen, too, which I'm excited for. Um, and then hockey. There's a couple hockey stuff, but I don't know if they'll be on. Because of the backwards compatibility with PS4, I feel like a lot of those games are just going to leap over to PS5, but I do hope to see some sequel stuff. Um, I guess the biggest thing I would like to see from Sony is just more effort in bringing back the classics. I think if they do that, I think they can really... Because the thing is, if they match Xbox with the, with bringing back old older games and stuff like that, they can't they can outmatch them because their library... Because they've been around longer, and they have a lot in their library. Of games like they've always had so many freaking games especially ps1 ps2 i mean good god it's like a mountain it's crazy yeah um oh yeah and but they're gonna have to compete with nintendo and nintendo's gonna be tough as hell to do because nintendo's just they are already going to outmatch them with exclusives because of all their Nintendo products. Um, Nintendo's kind of in a driver's seat at this point. They don't really have much to lose as long as they just keep making games and just keep upping, just keep upgrading the necessary like fixes. They should win again. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, hmm. How long could this possibly last? Where they just win and win and win, and no one ever beats. Um, forever. it's well, Nintendo is kind of a unique position because because they're kind of like because no matter who you are, most people want Nintendo. Like most people I know, either get have a PS, a PlayStation, or an Xbox, and a Switch. Like, PS4 and Switch, or Xbox One and Switch. One of the two. I mean, not everyone, but a lot of people, if they have two consoles, it's that combo. And I think a lot of it's because this, because Nintendo does such a great job of, of keeping their library alive. They're not like Sony. It's not like Sony where they, like, crash and, crash Bandicoot and Spyro just die out like that. I mean, they're bringing them back now. But for a long time, they were dead. Yeah. Oh, I also think that too many PlayStation Xbox loses. Well, we'll have to see. Also, that are the exact thing that aren't. Um. That's funny. You have like friends that is. They're exactly the same between PlayStation and Xbox. Oh yeah. They're just exactly the same. Oh, oh yeah. It's just, it's not even all that. 
Yeah, because the, the biggest issue with Xbox exclusives is that they, it's verity because a lot of their exclusives are shooters and racers, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with shooters and racers. But Sony, compared to Sony, Sony has... I think the biggest difference between the two is Xbox exclusives are very multiplayer based and Sony's exclusives are more single player based. So they're kind of already targeting certain audiences as is. But the thing, the biggest thing is that even though the, the exclusives are important, I mean, I mean, people, all those third party games being made for the consoles are like huge. And I know there's a huge demand for, from people to say no more to exclusives. Everything should be on everything. My only problem with that, it's a big problem, is that if everything's on everything, then what's the point of having different consoles? Like, at that point, everything's just going to be the same. Like, nothing's going to be special to a console. Like, I mean, if all the games are on the same systems, then what's what's the point, like, picking between PlayStation or Xbox? You know? There's not a whole lot. I mean, the exclusives make the console. It gives it its identity. If you take away that... I mean, back in the day, it could have worked because the consoles were different enough. But nowadays, that's not the case. So, it's... Yeah, and plus, I mean, and plus, exclusives do the best job of showing off the console because they're made for the console. Third-party games they have to be made with everything in mind, so there has to be they have to build them to be like that. But if you make a game just for Xbox, you're maximizing the Xbox, or vice versa with PlayStation. So you need exclusives as much as people. And see, I don't mind like a, a games are exclusive to consoles because it makes me want to actually get the console. That's kind of the point. <laughs> I mean, if you don't have enough games that are exclusive and good, then you're basically cutting half your money. Would have had a better console. Yeah, and speaking of that, we should. I would like. Yeah, speaking of that, I should like to bring up the fact that Atari's coming out with a new console soon. <laughs> I'm hiding this, highlighting this mainly because they have, it's because they are legit, like, trying something with this. And I kind of have a soft spot for Atari. So, I heard about this a couple years ago. And basically what it is, it's like, no, there's no disk drive. It's like, mainly, like, download stuff and basically what they're building it as is kind of like like kind of like this um kind of a a box of to like do like pc game stuff it's like you can access steam on it for example um some streaming services but it's gonna be like like a very um on like very download driven gaming experience and First of all, they give you like a hundred Atari games right off the bat, and I don't know if they're doing this or not, but apparently you can mod or create games through the console. I'm not quite sure, but it's possible. So that's something to get to. It is only selling for two ninety nine though. Coming out, it's going to be cheaper than the other stuff. So possible experimentation. Now, granted. I don't exactly know how much it's going to bring to the table in terms of innovation. I do know that they're going a very different route. But that doesn't mean that it's going to be an, an, a route that's already been explored or one that's going to be super successful. But it is going to be a little different, which I think will be kind of interesting to see given that the council line has been locked between three for the last, God, last um 20 years. Ever since the Dream Sega went out of the business, it's been pretty locked in. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how Atari does. Probably not well, but in case it does, it'd be kind of interesting to kind of see how it, like how it'll change the landscape of console the console race. Yeah, bro. It kind of stuck. People have certain consoles and certain games. Someone 
I really loved Sega and kind of down on their luck all these newer consoles. Yeah. Oh no, that's fair to say. I mean, I mean, there's still people that I still see people like on Twitter and whatever say they should Sega should come back. You know, um, it's interesting. This could be a, a topic for a whole nother video, but I'm talking about here. Um, Microsoft and Sega, like when they were Sega was making the Dreamcast, they Microsoft worked with them a ton, and they kind of used that experience to help themselves get into the console market in fact to be a lot of people including myself consider the original xbox to be like a, a kind of a quasi sequel to the dreamcast because the way like in a lot of small things but it's noticeable like for example the controllers are built very similarly not exact but very similarly to each other um and Sega did a lot of little things to try to kind of give Microsoft help. Like, they did a lot of... There was a lot of Dreamcast games that were exclusive on the original Xbox. And there was a lot of li little, like, things that Sega did on their Xbox counterparts that were a little bit more than... Than their, um... Than the, the PlayStation counterparts. Not a ton, but noticeable. Um, but yeah, that was kind of the biggest thing with those, is the difference of like, and plus the fact that my, and, and plus Microsoft and Sega were pretty, they're pretty close because they ended up both competing with Sony and Nintendo. So it's, so they kind of had each other's back in sense. The only problem is Sega really could never, like, fully be exclusive to X Microsoft, mainly because they had to make up, back up a lot of money, so they couldn't afford to piss off anyone else they were giving games to. So they had to really put up equal quality, for the most part, with the other consoles. But there was a lot of little things they did for Xbox to kind of say, here you go. In fact, there was talk of trying to get some of the Dreamcast games that were going on Xbox to get the Dreamcast servers to work on that console or something like that. It didn't quite work out. It didn't end up happening, but there was talk about it. Um, because Dreamcast was really the first console, I believe, to have online servers, and it worked well for, that, for what they had at the time. So, so yeah, it's... And I think the I think the overall, really, the biggest reason why this generation's not going to be the best is because I don't know how they're going to make it better than the previous gen. I mean, I don't know how they're going to convince me to buy one over what I have now other than a new game that's just on that system. I mean, I mean that's really the biggest reason why I got PS4 was that game, but I also got the PS4 because... Well, it felt like a huge leap over PS3. And so far, I'm not seeing that leap. I mean, granted, it's probably there, but I need more of it <laughs> to justify getting yeah. it. Um, Especially if, like, the amount of money put in the Oh, yeah, definitely. The money, money makes a huge difference. And to be honest, based on a pattern I'm seeing, I might actually get an Xbox first, which is saying something, because I always grew up on PlayStation, really. Just mainly to try something different, and I just have a feeling that they might perform a bit better. Because really, in all honesty, I'm not really looking for performance much. I'm just looking for, like... I'm just looking for, like, games at this point. I just... That's really my biggest thing at this point. So... I mean, at, at some point I'm going to have both. Let's not kid ourselves here. I'm going to have both at some point. It's just... It's just going to be tough. Because there's a lot of games on that are exclusive on PlayStation that I love. And I know most of them are going to get sequels. But, at the same time... I'm kind of curious. And plus, Corey wants in Series X. And to be honest, I don't really have a reason to argue against at this point. There's not a whole lot there. But, um... Series 
deck is probably pretty good. Though. I mean, I think we should give it a chance. Definitely should give it a look, smell. Yeah, give I... Yeah. Yeah, I probably will. It just depends. It's just... It, a lot of it's just depending on if I have 400 bucks to spend on getting a new console, because... Because the thing it is, is pretty yeah, and plus a lot of people during this pandemic, and I go to game stores a lot, a lot of them were like, like a lot of consoles and stuff were like gone, shelves empty, like everyone rebought stuff. So, so it's going to be very, very tricky to see like, um, like how it's gonna do because a lot of people went back to the old stuff because they were bored and they could either couldn't get the new stuff or they decide I'm not forking over all that I'm gonna go back a little bit because they're bored they're not working so they're just gonna do that and what happened was was they they went back and the prices rose a bit for a lot of those things but but yeah it's it's been interesting in the gaming world during all this, but I think at the end of the day, looking for, I think the generation will improve like others do, but I think what's going to hold it back is the fact that they're starting to hit a ceiling, and I think they need to start shifting their focus on, on what the gaming community wants, which is access to older games, complete backwards compatibility, and stuff like that. Stuff that Sony either doesn't know how to do or doesn't want to do. Xbox is more than willing to do it, they just don't have the gaming library for it. That's always been Xbox's biggest issue, is that. And the sad part is, when they released the original Xbox, there was a lot of cool exclusives for that, but they didn't, didn't, didn't do a good job carrying them over to the next gens. 360 carried some, but... And Xbox One kinda did. But the problem is that they just kept giving up a few of them over time until there's like, like barely anything. Hopefully that changes with the Series X. But we'll have to see. But yeah, I think... I think... That, so, what are your... So Mike, what are going to be your overall thoughts on... Or predictions on... Because I know you don't know much... But how do you predict your gaming experience will evolve in the upcoming, you know, generation here? I think it's gonna definitely get better. But, I mean, let's be honest, it's gonna be expensive still. So, I don't... Yeah, I agree. Maybe it'll not be worth it, man, for the amount of month. And then, maybe it's meant well, the, the tr Not as good. well, and also a big issue is memory. Like, so many games take up so much memory on these consoles. We ended up going back to the memory card system, only it's worse, because they're chonkers. They just hang out like nothing. They just hang out like little shits. And, and they're expensive as fuck. And it forces you to play the game of uninstall, reinstall... Can I get it? Should I get it? It it makes you think about getting a game, which is very, very... that Which hurts that, because the last thing these companies want is people questioning whether to game a game or not based on how much space they have. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean... I know... Yeah. yeah. All games. So, it's gonna, it's gonna be tricky there. But I, oh, I hate it. I do it all the time. Yeah, I, yeah, it's, that's kind of when it's like, like when it's become obvious that, and because here's the thing, I'm perfectly fine with a game having PS3 style graphics if, to save like 50 gigs of space for something else. Because, I mean, I, I appreciate good graphics as much as the next gamer, I really do, but at some point it's like it becomes a price too much for me to want to spend at some point I'm like okay I don't need this much it doesn't justify the amount of because here's a because some games take up so much gigabytes and they're barely anything and I wonder where does this go to you know it's so weird like Apex is a t 
big example of it, which kind of sucks because I want to like Apex, but there's like, but there's like, it doesn't give you a lot to work with, which is a shame. But um, but yeah, I think I think that's about as much as we can say. I think, I think overall, I think the biggest thing. I think to keep in mind if you're thinking about getting something here is just don't be afraid to wait because you don't want to get the first version and then they release a new version a year or two later that's so much better and you're kind of stuck with the first edition you don't want that at least I don't some people they'll carry it over and one thing to keep in mind with these systems and this is important that I should I, I, I can't believe I didn't mention this earlier. There's a huge difference in storage for the two. PS5 only has 600 and some gigs of storage. The Series X is will have like 800 gigs. Now granted, when both consoles came out, they both had 500 gigs. Like when the PS4 and Xbox One came out, they both had like 500 gigs in their first versions. So it's nothing new. But it's something to keep in mind if you're going to get games for your consoles. That you're going to have more to work with the Series X other than than the PS5. However, I will say the library for PS5 will probably be better than Xbox, starting out at least. At least until games start coming pouring out for the consoles. Yeah. Um, you make a decision between which one. Yeah. Those. Nintendo's and I don't know. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, it's just it just depends on the person. Like, cause here's the thing: at this point, there's not gonna be a lot of swaying. You're if you're if you're been an Xbox guy your whole life, you're not gonna change this gen. If you've been a PlayStation guy your whole life, you're not gonna change for this gen. I mean, really, the people who are gonna change have always changed. Like. It has to take something that hits someone in a specific way for them to want to change, you know. So, I guess it just depends. I mean, if you love Xbox stuff, you're going to stick with Series X. If you like Sony stuff, you're going to stick with Sony. I mean, I, I can see how maybe some of the backwards compatibility stuff with Sony might rub people the wrong way. But considering Sony's reach is so big across the world compared to Xboxes, even today even I can I can see I can see um them getting being able to get away with it which they shouldn't and they're technically not but they could but yeah I think we're gonna call it good here I don't any final thoughts on this whole thing Mike from you I just I don't know. And the kind of money I think that's all. Remember, like I just want to pick up the game, have a good time playing the game, whatever. So I don't. Need to yeah, yeah. The game. I don't really want to this is this is. Game, but... Yeah, that's kind of when retro gaming comes, and I think that's why there was such an upkeep in buying for retro games because people wanted a simple but yet fun, a simpler but yet fun, like not even like super simple like NES, SNES, like. PS2, Xbox, that gen, where it game was becoming, you know, more like we're familiar with today, but did have some of these nagging issues that are coming with the upgrades we're seeing. But yeah, I think we're going to call it good here. Um, I mean, we can go on this topic forever, but I think we cover as much as we're going to cover in one setting. Um, but yeah, the, another CambyCast episode. Saw a little bit of Corey in here. <laughs> Excuse me. And yeah, guys, uh, thanks for watching. In case you wanted to chat with me, Mike, or Corey, or, any or anyone else at the Campy Company, you don't want to use the YouTube comment section, we do have a couple options. The first one is we have a Discord channel. Find a link to that in about page slash about section of our channel. We also have a discussion tab in our channel as well. You can access that through a PC or laptop computer. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like the videos, and have a good day.